Hi all and welcome to the preview of Game Week 7. See, we saw some top performances uh, in the Game Week 6, especially uh, how uh, Manchester United were shocked by Aston Villa at their home uh, when uh, the last uh, minute goal was scored by the defender and uh, they won the game 1-0. The most surprising result was uh, at the Stamford Bridge uh, wherein uh, Manchester City overcame uh, Chelsea's, uh, I would say, great uh, resolve the way they have played over the course of uh, so many game weeks. But it was good to see Manchester City back to their best and uh, they, they they had a, a stellar game uh, if you talk about their performance as well. And uh, Brentford and Liverpool, again, it was a very good engaging 3 all draw which could have gone either way. and. Uh, it was it was a great effort from Brentford to to do that, and they really look a very strong unit. So, uh, game week th uh, six was full of surprises. A lot of people uh, uh, had had hopes from their uh, best players, but in the last game week also uh, we raised a point that uh, is it time actually for you to substitute uh, Bruno Fernandes right now? And unfortunately, he did miss penalty last time as well. So. I am not so sure uh, if uh, Bruno Fernandes would be at the helm of taking penalties for United in the future as well because now we have Cristiano Ronaldo uh, to to, to uh, probably do that and uh, unfortunately that 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 miss may actually uh, form the case of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo being the main man to take those penalties. So uh, before we uh, proceed further with what were the performances of the game week six, who players uh, who who made it to uh, the dream team, uh, the fixtures, the transfer tips for this game week and obviously which captain you need to have for this game week. So uh, before we proceed forward, I would request you to subscribe to our channel. So let's look at uh, the dream team of game week 6. Uh, as I said, House, uh, he scored that uh, winning goal against Aston Villa and with a clean sheet he got 15 points. He had a very good uh, season last time as well, but uh, he played only handful of games. He only came in the second half of the season and actually looked very impressive. So, Aston Villa, even after uh, losing Jack Grealish, really look a team to beat. And they are actually playing pretty well this season as well. Then, uh, Jao Cancelo, again, uh, nobody expected uh, Manchester City to come out uh, there as at, a, I mean, not conceding a single goal, a goal against Chelsea and still uh, coming out victor. So, Cancelo uh, assisted a goal and I think he was uh, a brilliant player for them. That's what he has done uh, for Portugal as well. So, 12 points again, uh, got into dream team. He's, he's also part of my team as well. So, it was a, it was a good gift for me as well. Then, uh, Moises Keane. Uh, see, Everton had a topsy-turvy uh, season if uh, so far uh, again, under Rafa Benitez, wherein they have started extremely impressively but uh, they have faltered uh, a bit in the last uh, couple of game weeks but the last game was uh, pretty good for uh, for Everton to to win that game again um, uh, with a clean sheet uh, a comfortable game so uh, i think uh, moyskin uh, uh, would be i think uh, should be in your team as well uh, even though they, they they won against the minos uh, norwich 2 nil but i still expect everton to be there and there about because as I have said, uh, Benitez is a very strong coach and he would definitely be trying to buy for that uh, Champions League spot. So, good performances. Apart from this, uh, see, in the midfield uh, and if you talk about a uh, couple of players, now Arsenal is now impressing, especially in the last couple of game weeks, if you would have seen after losing uh, all the first three games of the season, the youngsters of Arsenal are driving them forward, uh, Emil smith -Rowe and Saka. I, as I always said, Saka is a world-class player and he is showing his worth. And not only he is uh, scoring goals, he's creating and he's making job easier for people like Aubameyang uh, as well as uh, Smith Rowe. So these two players well deserved in the dream team and uh, they had a great haul against an absolutely atrocious uh, Tottenham right now. Uh, I don't know what has happened to them. The the way they started uh, the first three games winning uh, one nil each, and after that they have just uh, you know the wheels have started to come off, and they look really shambolic at this point of time. The Kure, um, that's uh, what I said about uh, how Everton are playing uh, under Benitez. The Kure is playing a little bit more forward as compared to what he was doing earlier. So I think uh, if you if you if you have to make one uh, change. Uh, even seeing the uh, the fixtures going forward as well, I think Dakota you can definitely consider because he's still a cheaper option as compared to other uh, players. Then uh, Janet, uh, 
again uh, brentford players uh, up, up, you talk about even tony jenet uh, bomba i think everybody chipped in against liverpool and uh, when we and see it was a tough luck i would say to liverpool maybe brentford deserved that draw but they had so many chances which they missed but uh, this is one team uh, brentford which is not going to go away very soon for the season and they look really disciplined they have the attacking flair they have a resolute defense as well so good to see jenet performing against uh, a team like liverpool and definitely he deserved his spot in the dream team and it rounds and uh, i think he has also shaped up his uh, career again uh, after making a move from crystal palace taking penalties uh, for everton and um, starting almost all the games he is one player which we uh, which we all feel that uh, he has not fulfilled his potential which he showed uh, uh, which we all thought that he would be a regular for england but it's good to see him doing well um, and benitez is a is a kind of a coach who would actually get maximum out of his performances then jamie wardy see lester we raised it last time also it's only jv wardy who is actually it's a kind of one man show which is happening and about and obviously demari gray uh, which we which we mentioned as well but wardy is actually uh, there is a lot of pressure on him to score goals he has done it again he has been a veteran for so many years so many seasons a world class player always there and there about um, for the fight of for golden boot and he had a good haul as well and neil mope uh, again now brighton brighton played a very uh, a very tough game against uh, crystal palace but a one all draw a fair kind of a result and neil mope as you said uh, that game was uh, mope versus uh, zaha and both of them scored so good performances from brighton they had a very strong start of the season uh, slightly disappointed i would say with the with the draw but i think they would take it at this point of time where they are after uh, six games so again just to recap the highlights for game week 6 arsenal really looked a very good top notch performance the old arsenal against uh, under Ar- arsen wenger was back and it was good to see mikel arteta also celebrating the like he has done because he has been under fire and he has been one of the bookies favorites to be fired uh, for the season so good to see him and i don't know what is happening with tottenham they are absolutely in disarray not able to create anything that uh, the midfield looks all over the place i don't know what is happening with the formation and no no espirito i don't know uh, what he would be thinking after making that move from wolves so t- tough days ahead of uh, for tottenham and i hope that no no is given more chance uh, f- uh, to survive with tottenham um, and not to, you know p- p- not be fired not be the first one to actually face the sack for the season uh leicester uh, again they've not looked very good again against us against a burnley side uh, we all expected leicester to do better right now and something is not clicking uh, there are rumors uh, for brendan rodgers moving to barcelona because coman is also not doing well i don't know if that is playing a part uh, in uh, in leicester's performances but something is different not right obviously they're not been helped by the injuries they had in their team about their full backs not still not been able to play so but one thing uh, lester still has a lot of work to do even to to come out of that uh, mid table and to at least uh, fight for the champions league spots now aston villa as i have again repeated a uh, lot of people thought that uh, you know there would be a, a big blow uh, by losing jack grealish but see they already had a very strong team if you see their core it's a, it's a team which is very disciplined and uh, they actually they they hunt uh, against big teams quite well and they have actually beaten almost all the top 6 clubs uh, in the last uh, one or two seasons so they are a side you cannot write off any time and they would be there and there about uh, playing another uh, strong season in my opinion and brentford uh, i think this is a team which got promoted after 70 odd years and nobody thought that uh, they would survive uh, this but they are doing a a great job of actually not only surviving but uh, a very comfortable mid uh, mid table team which actually is also looking very very strong to finish in top 10 as well i mean just an early start of the season but they look really disciplined and there is a there is a team i don't think they would be close to relegation which a lot of people and a lot of bookies actually initially thought when the season started so uh, now game week 7 uh, uh, right now i think this is Uh, this is a game week which is not uh, it doesn't have many easy fixtures see the results have been so up and down from the first six games but it's, it's almost virtually impossible for anybody to pick that which game would be easier and uh, which game would be 
are, are tough to call. But some straightforward games would be Chelsea playing uh, Southampton, Manchester United playing Everton. Now, this is a very tricky uh, game for United, uh, uh, especially losing that uh, of that game against Aston Villa, even though they won that uh, last minute uh, match against uh, Villarreal when, when Ronaldo scored. But I still believe that United would have enough for Everton at their home. Uh, it should be 2-1 or 3-1, but let's see. Uh, but they still have a chance. Again, West Ham and Brentford, again, uh, it's, it's more of a reputation rather than performances because Brentford has been right up there. But West Ham, I believe, would be too strong uh, in their hometown. Uh, uh, so, let's see how it goes. But yes, West Ham would definitely have a better chance right now. <clears throat> so, the plays we are suggesting, there are four plays we are suggesting for this uh, game week. Now, first one... And the second one is Arsenal duo of uh, Saka and Smith Rowe. The reason why I'm uh, picking these two players is because if you see the next five fixtures of uh, of Arsenal, they're actually uh, all all the games wherein they would definitely have chances to score. Brighton away, Crystal Palace home, Aston Villa home, Leicester away and Watford home. So I believe that there are goals and uh, Saka and Smith Rowe not only would be among the goals, but they would be almost sure starters. See, Arsenal don't have a European football right now, so there is no question of resting players and 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 going with the, with some untested players. I think these these two guys would definitely continue to be in the team, and you can definitely pick them uh, for for the for the coming five fixtures. Then Marcus Alonso, uh, I have said about Rudiger last time. I I I did warn you that uh, the game against City would be tricky for Rudiger to to keep a clean sheet, but I also pointed out the next five fixtures. And those next five fixtures are Southampton home, Brent, Brentford away, Norwich home, Newcastle away and Burnley home. So that's why I'm picking the partner of uh, Rudiger right now, which is Marcos Alonso, because these two players have looked invariably, they would be there and there about in the starting 11. So I expect them to at least have four or maxim, or maybe all the five games where they would be able to keep a clean sheet. So I'm going with Alonso right now and the price of Alonso would actually shoot up very soon and the same would happen with Rudiger as well. And the last player is Rafinha, I am uh, suggesting uh, Rafinha of Leeds United. Uh, the Brazilian international has a big responsibility now because Patrick Bamford is injured and he is uh, leading the line. And Rafinha has scored in the last two games and if you see the, all the five fixtures, they are actually a mouth watering fixture uh, for, uh, for Leeds wherein Watford, Southampton, Bulls, Norwich and uh, Leicester are their their opponents. So at six point five for Rafinha, I still feel it's a kind of a steal. You can have him in your team because the way Leeds play, they would always play a flamboyant uh, football. So they would be among the goals, even though they would definitely concede goals whenever they play in a team. So if I talk about my performances in the game week six, uh, I had a not so good uh, game week. Uh, maybe the, the the ranking uh, maybe shows that as well 1.5 million out of um, 8 uh, 8 billion or uh, so not not the not the best performances i would say maybe 20 percent or so one 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 silver lining which i had that i had no i did not make any transfer so i had a i had two transfers for this game we have done both of them so i would uh, discuss it uh, in the next uh, in the next part of the video so my defense again alonso conceded against uh, manchester city got a yellow card only got one point uh white again considered very late arsenal considered late against tottenham uh, so i missed out on that uh, clean sheet but let's see how it goes in the future uh ben rama unfortunately didn't do anything uh, in this game apart from uh, i mean just just got three points Bruno Fernandes, uh, he missed a penalty and I, I, I discussed that the last time also that I would just still see if there is uh, any scope of Bruno Fernandes coming back to form or maybe taking most of the responsibility. I saw that uh, for the penalty he did, he was the one who stepped in but he missed that and he scored a zero so that was disappointing. Salah scored uh, one goal, he should have scored three to four goals in the last game against uh, Brentford. So, got 14 points, I mean 7 points into 2 because he was my captain. So, if he would have scored a hat-trick or so, I would have been in a much better position. But again, let's see how it goes. Ismail Saar, uh, I've been saying it from the first game week. I had this player right from the start. Uh, he is somebody who is going to be the main man for uh, Watford along with Dennis. 
uh, but but sar is somebody you should definitely have him in your team don't do not ignore this player he has been a world class talent and i believe that maybe in january or uh, maximum by next season we would see him in in one of the top uh, four or five clubs in england but let's see how it goes puki uh the reason i'm having this player is because uh, norwich they they are uh, right now they are they are in tatters uh, they have not even got a single point uh, for for this uh, for the season uh, i don't even know that uh, when it, that would come because they don't even look uh, anywhere near it but whenever norwich would score or or there would be uh, some kind of an attacking threat uh, buki would be at the forefront that's why i'm having this player i'm hopeful lukaku didn't do much uh, manchester city did not allow uh, chelsea to do anything in that game so it was a top performance and ivan toni he assisted one goal he came close of scoring one goal he scored a goal from an offside position so he is a very hard working player i think uh, he would uh, he should be in your team if you cannot ignore it and on bench i had uh, gallagher who assisted a goal against uh, brighton so that was my team and my overall rank is uh, uh, 298000 which is around 3% of uh, of the overall player so in a way i am now trying to catch up because my game week rank when i started was around 25 uh, 2.5 million so i'm just now coming back to uh being under uh, 300000 so let's see i hope that i can continue moving forward so the team uh, whatever i'm doing uh, for this uh, game week uh, i am making two changes ten ganga uh, Tot- tottenham i don't think that uh, they would be coming back to form any time soon and i don't expect any clean sheets from ten ganga i am getting a rudiger uh, I-, i i discussed the strategy in the last uh, discussion as well uh, my main uh, reason for doing so was that I wanted to get more Chelsea defenders, and that's why I had to uh, keep hold of one of my transfers. And Bruno Fernandes, uh, this is an infamous uh, transfer which I am making, especially for Manchester United fans. But it is not an emotional one; it is a logical one because whenever because because of uh, Ronaldo being now maybe he would take more penalties. He is already there taking more free kicks, and now he is a main man, uh, which Bruno was uh, earlier. So. that's the reason why uh, i am taking that punt of uh, not selecting bruno fernandes and now uh, keeping now uh, getting in rafinha because as i said uh, with uh, absence of bamford he would definitely be the man a go to man for lead so that's a change which i have made and uh, i am still uh, not so sure about my captain uh, if i talk about my captaincy picks i want to go with sala but i think lukaku is a safer option because of southampton home which chelsea are having and see chelsea have lost 1-0 to uh, uh manchester city and they have again uh, lost in champions league so they are under fire i mean the first time i would say that thomas tuchel is under fire and hence i expect uh, lukaku to be coming out extremely stronger in this game and score a couple of goals and the second choice obviously would be sala even though it's manchester city and they had us a great performance against chelsea but i still believe uh, sala uh, if if there is any player who would be able to step up uh, in big games it is mo sala and third is ronaldo against everton so thank you so much thank you for listening to us and uh, you can find uh, uh, whatever uh, fantasy predictions and previews which we have done in the in the previous game weeks on our uh, youtube uh, channel we would be continuing with our uh, fantasy teams every week and the suggestions of dream 11 teams of all the english premier league matches as well so thank you take care and play responsibly